Welcome to Listpedia. Here are the top 10 documentaries you must see. Number 10, Making a Murderer. Netflix is taking television by storm, and the program that has recently got everyone talking is Making a Murderer. This documentary is a series of 10 episodes filmed over a 10 year period. It tells the story of Stephen Avery, who was sentenced to 18 years in prison for the sexual assault and attempted murder of Penny Bernstein. We knew he was innocent. Avery was exonerated in 2003, but the story continued when he was arrested and convicted of the murder of another woman. I'm innocent. With the topic still controversial, you must watch this documentary and decide for yourself. In this instance, the DNA evidence requires that the courts speculate. Did he do it? Or were there people out to make a murderer? Number nine. Man on Wire. There has been a book, a feature film, but maybe best of all is the 2008 documentary. Man on Wire tells the story of Felipe Pettit, who sets out to complete a dangerous, not to mention illegal, high wire routine. The documentary takes viewers back to 1974 when Pettit set out to cross a tightrope between New York City's World Trade Centers with no safety precautions in place. It is a collaboration of modern interviews past footage and recreations. And the first thing we do is unpack and take equipment out. Labeled the artistic crime of the century, Man on Wire shows a time before parkour or the crazy daredevils of today. Number eight, life in a day. With Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking sites, we are constantly shown the inane ins and outs of everyone's day. But how much do we actually know? Life in a Day is the first crowdsourced documentary movie and uses video clips submitted from people from all over the world telling the story of their lives on a single day, July 24, 2010. Co-produced by Ridley Scott, this documentary received 80,000 submissions, adding up to 4,500 hours worth of footage. I love you. I love you too. From that, they created a 95-minute movie that was shared free on YouTube for everyone to see. This is a unique and remarkable documentary. Number 7, 30 for 30, The Price of Gold. As part of ESPN's 30th anniversary celebration, they aired a series of documentaries. The Price of Gold is a must-see. It focuses on the Kerrigan Harding figure skating tragedy. There, there must be some mistake. That just doesn't happen. This also made our list of sports cheating scandals. The link for that video is in the description below. The documentary revisits the 1994 event when Tanya Harding arranged for rival Nancy Kerrigan to be badly assaulted, removing her from competing in the Olympics. This documentary was released two decades after that event and gives a fresh perspective on the events that shook the professional figure skating world. Who knew figure skating could be so entertaining? Number six, The Cove. The Cove deals with the controversial issue of Japanese fishermen trapping, torturing, and killing dolphins. The documentary was filmed by a group of activists using state-of-the-art equipment to infiltrate Taji Cove, where they filmed the horrific scenes. Also interesting about this documentary is the technology used to capture the images, such as dummy animals and rock-like camouflage cameras. It has won dozens of awards and is a documentary you must put on your list to watch. Number five, Blackfish. Almost everyone has been to a water theme park, wandered around a zoo, or watched performing animals at a circus. If you have ever done any of these, this is one movie you have to see. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. This documentary tells the horrific story of when a theme park's orca whale lashed out and killed its trainer. In order to determine why it happened and if it will happen again, Blackfish uses archival footage, past and present interviews, and expert opinions. I will never, ever do that, you know? It is such a powerful documentary. SeaWorld reported a fourth quarter loss of 25.4 million with decreased attendance at the theme park following its release. Number four, Spellbound. No, this isn't about magic or Harry Potter. Spellbound is a must-see documentary that follows eight young child competitors as they battle it out to see who will win at the 1999 Scribes National Spelling Bee. C-A-B-A-N-Y-A -A, Companion. 
The pressure builds as the words get harder to spell and the group dwindles. Not only is it a great example of the vast intellect of young kids, but leads you to question if it's right to put so much pressure on the kids. Cephalalgia. Cephalalgia? The documentary has won numerous awards, but the question remains, could you spell Opsimath, Seguidilla, or Logaria? Number three, March of the Penguins. There is something about animal documentaries that has audience flocking to see them. March of the Penguins is like any other movie. Interesting characters, entrancing scenery, and a thrilling story. The Emperor Penguin is technically a bird, although one that makes his home in the sea. The difference is, this is a documentary following real penguins. March of the Penguins takes audiences where they have never been before, showing them the yearly journey made by the Emperor Penguins of Antarctica as they search for a mating partner. Once their little ones come along, they face further battles, such as weather and predators. Will they make it through another year? Watch March of the Penguins and find out. Number two, Fahrenheit 9-11. September 11 was a moment in history that will always draw attention, for good or for bad. Fahrenheit 9-11, made by the controversial Michael Moore, was released in 2004. Moore uses this documentary to ask questions which aren't normally asked, especially to an audience as large as this. Was Bush properly elected? Were the Bin Laden family in a closer relationship with the President of the United States than they should have been? And of course, was the war on Afghanistan and Iraq the right move? I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Perhaps what makes this such a popular documentary is that the questions it asks are still relevant today. Number one, murder ball. Even if you don't play, everyone watches sports. It might be the Premier League, a TV show like Friday Night Lights, or a documentary like Murder Ball. There was a certain fascination to sport and the competition it breeds. Murder Ball was released in 2005 and shows audiences a sport they probably hadn't seen. Quad rugby is a quick paced and violent game played by those in wheelchairs, mostly with spinal injuries. Murder Ball follows the American and Canadian teams leading up to the 2004 Paralympic Games. It gives a special insight into the personal lives of the players. My boy, the best son anybody could ever have. That makes me so proud. After watching, you'll be sure to never think of the word disabled the same again.